couple quick notes before we jump into the video today. I am obviously not done with Total War or Immortal Empires, despite the three-week break and the times that have preceded it. I have been feeling more and more burnt out on the game since well before Chaos Wars. This isn't really a new thing, but I think that's logical considering the sheer amount of coverage I've done for the series over the last five plus years. Hopefully years that many of you have gotten hours of fun and entertainment out of. You're not even remotely done with it though, but sometimes it can be good to step away, clear the mind, and just do something else. And with any luck, that passion will return as it has many times before. Thank you all for bearing with me. Darktide is likely going to be the main focus for the next couple of weeks. I think the update there is going to be a lot of fun, a lot of interesting stuff to cover, but I will try and work in some Total War stuff where possible as well. Like today, where we are returning to the jungles of Lustria, where Norskin barbarians are knocking on the lizard people's doorstep once more. Some really fun builds in this one. Purple People Eaters of Zeti are on one side, Slan Mage Priest of the Lore of Light at the helm, with Barona's Time Warp as the main focus, and this is one of those things that I really love to do with Temple Guard against Norska and Chaos, is just bring a really elite infantry-focused army that can defend itself in all kinds of circumstances and get those incredible buffs from Barona's Time Warp. Really, the only failing of Temple Guard is their kind of crappy melee attack value, which Barona's Time Warp completely makes up for, both allowing them to gap close on other infantry and then absolutely blenderize them in CQC. So when you take a unit like the Star Chamber Guardians, you can basically fight any monstrous and infantry combo in the game when supported by Slon. Super thematic and very good against the builds Chaos and Norska like to bring. Colossal Hunter Ripper Dactyls for their Toad Rage and Bonus Force Large and Salamander Hunting Pack will provide the support, but the core is those three units of Temple Guard who will have their claws full with a Skin Wolf build led by a War Mammoth and Wolfric the Wanderer atop it. Shaman Sorcerer of the Lore of Metal, Plague of Rust, and Final Transmutation. Good counter to the high and tight formations Temple Guard like to employ around their Mage Priests, and then a bunch of Chaff Infantry and Javelins with a few Berserkers thrown in for good measure. So at the beginning of this game, Salamander Hunting Pack, we know they're a great choice versus Chaos and Norska, who like to bring trolls and low armor monsters on occasion. They're pretty much an auto-include versus Norska, because Skin Wolves are still the best Norska unit after all these years. There's a reason they're known as the Wind Wolves, and so you bring Sallies to hard counter their low armor regen and fire weakness, but they can also shoot infantry too. And as is the case with anything low armor, 100 missile strength and explosive volleys will cause some discomfort, bonus versus large or no. So Brutes of the Hound will have to suffer through that on their way in as this Viking swarm makes its way down Toothgrass Hill and into the killing fields below. Cheap infantry around that Temple Guard core is still the play for the Lizard People, particularly Skank Cohort with Javs, who also like the generally low armor values of Norska, but they do feed those marauding buffs if they charge into melee against Berserkers or even just regular marauders. So generally don't want to just throw them in, put them on the flanks, give them time to throw their Javelins, and they can be great in this matchup. Salamander is getting a really good opening volley into the Skin Wolves, who kind of broke up that Skin Cohort formation. You'll see they're retreating behind the safety of the Temple Guard, because Barona's Time Warp is about to go down. Roots of the Hound are already down past half HP. Here comes Wolfric on his Mammoth on the Lizardman right flank, so Bubble of Nope will counteract that, granting a 20% ward save in the area. And Boss Protection is the other spell the Slan has brought today. Essentially makes Temple Guard unkillable, and frankly, it's just nice to bring a lore of magic that isn't just burst healing, right? I do think buff spells are amongst the weakest in the game currently, maybe the weakest archetype of spells, but Time Warping Temple Guard just works so well, it's more the exception than the rule, and Foss Protection is a really cheap, spammable spell that will also help hold the line when those Berserkers are trying to break through on one flank or the other. Mammoth is going to Rampage and cause some problems on the Lizardman right flank, but of course, this is why you bring the Temple Guard and the Legion of Shakwa in the center, because one, you're getting the missile resist from all those axes and javelins you know Norska will bring, but you also have all bo bonus versus large infantry that can hold the line when the Mammoth comes knocking. You can see the Sentinels of Zeti are keeping that really high and tight, compact formation, one, to get the benefits from Barona's Time Warp when they overcast it, which effectively doubles the radius of the spell, which means you can basically hit half your army at least but it's also to keep those Salamanders safe from the Skin Wolves who are always on the prowl for a big flank. Sally's have been picking off the Javelin teams while Time Warp hits left and Star Chamber Guardians plunge into the fray. Look at that stat line. For 45 seconds, they're gonna have 65 melee attack and almost 50 melee defense. Makes the fight for the Van Heimling is completely untenable on that side of the battlefield. But that is one of the major benefits of Skin Wolves. 
they aren't meant to get stuck in. They can hit and run, and so they don't have to commit too hard there. And as they retreat, that is when the Ripperdactyls, the Colossodon Hunters, will make their move. They were hiding in the tree line, kind of obscured by the canopy, but they're going to be a little bit late here. Ideally, they would have engaged while the wolves were tied up, but now that's no longer a good fight for the Flyers, and they will have to flee. Really interesting game of chess between those two units. Skin Wolves and Rippers are both very squishy, but hit like trucks versus large, so if either one of them gets caught out, they'll be torn to shreds by the other. Wolfric and his Mammoth are making their presence felt. Banishment, the reworked spell, not in terms of gameplay, but just in terms of visuals, looks super cool. It's actually the, maybe the first close-up we've gotten of it, at least on this channel anyway. And Barona's Time Warp definitely making a huge impact as Sea Fang rips through the Lizardmen Infantry. Javelins are getting a little bit too close for comfort. A couple of them moved up too far, got blown up by the Salamander Hunting Pack, but they can't outrange the Sallies anyway, so it's not really up to them. A few of them did move into melee by accident, though. Rippers did escape, but down to half HP. Rev Crystal will be able to heal them up, but they lost two or three models, which will not come back. Rev Crystal will actually bring back models, but unlikely they'll bring back any here because of how much HP they lost and the fact that two models are already dead. But the Mammoth is back into melee, running over the Temple Garden. This is definitely something the Mammoth does incredibly well, even against Halberd Infantry. If a Halberd unit is tied up and fighting something else, the Mammoth pretty much has free reign to rear charge or cycle charge down the flank. Basically use it like a chariot and cause all kinds of carnage. So Fawn's Protection will be cast the way of the Temple Guard to keep them a little bit more survivable there. But Wolfric is causing all kinds of problems over on that side of the battlefield, despite the fact that he is down to about 35% HP or so. He can pretty much kill Limitless Temple Guard as long as they're not attacking him back. Easier said than done but there's all kinds of infantry still on the field to tie them up while he goes right down the length, down the flank, and that's what he's doing right now. Toad Rage activated on the Colossus on Hunters, dealing with some wolves in the rear, and the Mammoth charging into the flank of those Legion of Shakwa, while the Rev Crystal kind of attacks air nearby. Another Barona's Time Warp, this time probably cast a little bit preemptively and not in a great spot because there's not a whole lot engaged there. Star Chamber Guardians and the rest of the Temple Guard are coming back to deal with Wolfric in the center and another ward save bubble from the Slan Mage Priest protecting his spawn. Get another look at Wolfric and his mean murderous mammoth machine stampeding his way through prehistoric creatures. One of my favorite eras of natural history when mammoths and dinosaurs were dueling to the death while cavemen watched and clapped. Pleistocene Epic was wild, and the Terror Birds, not Titanus, not Kalenkin, but the Ripper Dactyls, fighting for their freaking life like R. Kelly against a horde of furries. Like I said, it's gonna depend who gets the better engagement. Both are more than capable of killing each other between those Skin Wolves and those Colossodon Hunters. For now, this first unit of Skin Wolves are probably going to die because the Ripper Dactyls are supported by the heal from the Rev Crystal and that Bubble of Nope Ward save, but more Skin Wolves are piling in, and with their charge bonus, that should be enough to see the Terror Birds disintegrate. Really good engagement from Norska, overlapped by the Norskan Warhounds, and a final transmutation. First we've seen so far, that was a good one. It'll hit the Star Chamber Guardians and the Colossodon Hunters, and that means they are going to melt away like the snows of summer. Banishment from the Slan Mage Priest, probably doing more friendly fire than killing Norskins in that situation, but wasn't super impactful either way. And we're gonna see the Norskin cavalry start moving in to get some close range volleys into the Ankylosaur and the rest of those skink cohort. Might be able to do some nice skirmishing and charging down of routing troops. Norska will want to keep those units alive, even though there aren't many models or HP remaining. We did see Wolfric cast his Hunter of Champions on the Slan Mage Priest, but decided not to duel him, realizing the Temple Guard were getting close. He ran away from the Star Chamber Guardians, which is a good idea if you are a freakishly large monster. And at the moment, he's going after the Salamander Hunting Pack, who have been incredible in this game. Got some great volleys into the Skin Wolves and those Brutes of the Hound, but for the moment, not quite fast enough to escape from the clutches of Wolfric and his gigantic furry Olafonts. Blood Statue out of Spite, cast on the Norskin Marauder Javelins. They will probably lose a lot of models to that. It's a really good single target DPS spell from the Slan Mage Priest. And yeah, we're seeing their, them wavering now. Probably lost a good half their models from that one because they were already a little bit low. 
and the Lizardmen are looking to make that compact formation once more, get everything back into a protective box around their Mage Priest, because they know Wolfric is coming. He's rumbling, he's bumbling, he's stumbling, and it looks like the Shaman Sorcerer of the Lore of Metal is currently being trod upon by that Rev Crystal Ankylosaur. Mammoth is back into melee. He's exhausted, but he is the key if he wants to get the Vanna Heimlings back into this match. And the balance bar has been in favor of Lizardmen for quite some time, but Wolfric is more than capable of carrying this game and getting them back into a winning position with a couple more good charges like this one. Temple Guard a little bit overextended. Half of their formation, probably more like 80% of their formation, just run over. Really good charge from Wolfric, and they're going to route here. The Temple Guard are going to be run over by the Marauders who come in to reinforce. Bronos Time Warp upgraded was cast on the Star Chamber Guardians, but Wolfric was able to disengage, and even though the speed bonus helps the Temple Guard a lot, it doesn't give them enough to catch up to monsters, generally speaking. So now, with the huge ward save coming down from the Mage Priest, and a big scrum developing in the center. Norse is going to send everything they can, provide some cushion for the push-in as the elephant escapes and continues its cycle charging. Some terror routes are in there in the center around that Rev Crystal. That is going to be a gorgeous final transmutation from the Shaman Sorcerer, and Norska might very well get back into this game off the back of that overcast alone. Take a look at that value on the Shaman Sorcerer of the Lore of Metal. Just skyrocket. Was at 700, already up to 1300, and still climbing. And much more importantly, the HP of the Lizardmen's most important units all just got shish by that really well-timed spell. Star Chamber Guardians down past half HP. The Rev Crystal down past half HP. Basilodon's not looking very healthy at the moment. To be fair, neither is Wolfric. Slon Mage Priest down past half as well, and everything else is routed, and Norska has the mobility advantage at this point. The Salamander Hunting Pack are long gone. The Ripper Dactyls were ripped in half by these Skin Wolves, and this is where Skin Wolves, we saw it with the last Skin Wolves replay about a month or so ago. This is really where they shine. Like, yeah, they'll route off multiple times. The leadership's not incredible or anything, but they are designed to charge in and out of combat, and when they route, they regen, and they get ready back for more fights later on in the battle. So, Wolfric is routing here. Star Chamber Guardians getting another Bronus Time Warp, plus 28% speed, plus 26 melee attack, and they're just straight up pooping on those Skin Wolves. Slot Mage Priest casting some really powerful Psychonetic Blasts and CQB, and it looks like the Star Chamber Guardians might have the power to hold on. If the Mammoth doesn't return, Norska cannot win this. Getting a rear charge with the Marauder Horse Masters, but is that going to be enough against Star Chamber Guardian Temple Guard? Absolutely not. They will be scythed down in seconds. Skin Wolves as well, and it looks like Lizardmen are going to be able to hold on. That got a lot closer than I think anyone in that battle was expecting. It looked like it was handily in favor of Lizardmen for quite some time, but some really good final transportation and cycle charging from the Mammoth and Skin Wolves brought it back. In the end, though, Baronus Time Warp was just such an impactful spell of this game. And as I said at the start, it really covers for the weakness of Temple Guard, who have low base melee attack. Not as big a deal for the Star Chamber Guardians, because they are a Regiment of Renown, with the plus 9 melee attack base anyway. But for regular Temple Guard, Baronus Time Warp really turns it into a different unit that's capable of killing pretty much anything on the Chaos or Norskin roster. And more importantly, it allows them to do what most of the units in this game simply cannot do, which is fight a combination of heavy infantry and monsters together. You stack up Aura of Quetzal, Baronus Time Warp, and Fa's Protection. Temple Guard have 65 melee attack and 100 melee defense. Absolutely insane, super fun. Temple Guard are a great core versus those particular factions, but of course, they have other issues like getting shot by Imperial Artillery or Sisters of Avalorn, that type of thing, which is why you don't see them all that often in competitive multiplayer. Salamander Hunting Pack were great this game too, 84 kills and 2,100 value. Really fun game. GG to Zach B. Sane. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.